Uh, I'd say take Iran's threats do this seriously enough because there's a significant, significant degree of miscommunication between Iran and all the other parties. So any message could be misinterpreted. And they've almost come back from the brink of war last week about, you know, after the entire drone incident was downplayed by Trump effectively, but it could have gone a lot worse. So yes, Iran is actually playing a very, very tricky game and has to play a very fine balancing act to be able to avoid any serious confrontation in the region. What do you see as the end game here? We know that President Trump has said that he's willing to sit down and hold discussions uh, with Iran. We know that uh, members of the Iranian uh, regime uh, attended the OPEC meeting at the start of this week, along with a number of uh, other major oil suppliers uh, and countries from around uh, the world. Is Iran isolated or do you see that we will get to a stage where there are discussions and any further escalation can be avoided? I think there's definitely room for, for this solution to be avoided, actually, because you, on one hand, you have Trump, who is quite erratic, but also at some points, he has made some very great overtures, like last Sunday, about North Korea. So he invited Kim Jong-un to come to DMZ too. That worked out fairly well. Iran is also not alone. It has European um, allies, not allies actually, but people who are still lobbying for a deal to go through and not fall through as well. So both sides are not alone. Both sides do have significant grievances and miscommunication, but there's still room for some sort of deal to be salvaged out of here. Wakas, let me put you in a spot with a pointed question. What do you think is the probability of a military skirmish between uh, you know, the US and Iran? We came that close, right? An hour away from attacks before Trump pulled the plug and said, look, too many civilian casualties. With Trump's erratic behavior, it can go either way. I mean, uh, just as is the case of Kim, you know, he, he uh, uh, handed out the olive branch and, you know, and they are starting to talk. But with Tehran, it doesn't look like we are there yet. It'll take a while before we get there. Could, could we see military conflict? Uh, um, yes, Trump is erratic, as you said, but he also has elections next year in the US. So he will always bear those in mind. He will say things, yes. Iran is also saying things. What could really downplay the risk here is obviously if they do come down to have a discussion. But on the flip side, you can have another incident like the drone, multiple misunderstandings, and that would escalate the significant crisis here because unlike North Korea, where Japan, China, South Korea would all want to sit down and talk, we do have hawks in the region like Saudi Arabia and Israel who are completely against Iran on multiple fronts. So we do have people backing some sort of confrontation here, if not military, then other sort of hard stances. But military conflict, from just purely American perspective, would be very low. Hey, everybody. It's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.